ఓం శ్రీ లక్ష్మీ నరసింహాయన్ మహా వాల్మీకి రామాయణ బాలకాండ చాప్టర్ థర్టీ త్రీ ద మ్యారేజ్ ఆఫ్ కుషానాబాస్ డాటర్స్ టు బ్రహ్మదత్త సమరీ డాటర్స్ ఆఫ్ కుషానాబా రిపోర్ట్ అబౌట్ ద ఎయిర్ గాడ్స్ మిస్చీఫ్ ప్లీస్డ్ అట్ దేర్ బిహేవియర్ కుషానాబా థింగ్స్ అండ్ అరేంజర్స్ ఫార్ దర్ మ్యారేజ్ విత్ బ్రహ్మదత్త ఎ సెంట్లీ కింగ్ after the marriage by the touch of hand of brahmadatta the girls are rid of their misshapen bodies and they again become great beauties chapter 33 in detail on hearing the sentence of scholarly kushanaba those 100 girls touched his feet with their foreheads and spoke to him the all pervasive air god desired to dishonor us o king resorting to improper approach and overlooking virtuous conduct our father is there and we are not independent you be safe hence o air god you may request our father to know whether he gives us to you or not thus we have told the air god but though we all have spoken to him thus that air god who is bound by greed refused to take notice of our words and he has harmed us a lot thus those girls inform their father on listening their words that highly virtuous and highly resplendent king spoke to the 100 girls with unsurpassed virtue forgiving is the duty of imperturbable and you have done it excellent o daughters traversing through you your unity my family's prestige is also kept up forgiveness is an adornment to women as a matter of fact even for men and this matter called forgiving that which is there it is an impractical affair that too in respect of divinities and the kind of forgiveness you all possess uniformly that is further laudable grace is altism grace is ritualism o oh my daughters grace is glory grace is virtue and this universe is verily abiding in graciousness alone for grace itself is the truth isn't it thus king kushanaba said to his daughters and sent them away on leaving those girls o rama that king whose valor match- matches that of gods and who is an expert in thinking strategy started to think with his ministers on the topic topics like as to how his daughters are to, are to be married to to which country they are to be sent at which time marriage shall happen and to which marriage bridegroom the marriage is to be proposed and so on thus vishwamitra continued his narration during that time a great resplendent sage named kuli is there who is auspicious in his behavior and a, and who who holds his semen upwards and who has achieved high ascetic practice strictly according to vedic canons while the sage is in the practice of ascetism a celestial female served him at the place of his ascetism safety be with you o rama she is somada by her name the daughter of urmila even she is obedient in his respect and dedicating herself in ministering to him she stayed there righteously after some time the sage kuli has become satisfied with her service when her service is fructified o rama the sage benevolently spoke to her saying i am perfectly pleased with your service let good be tied you what wish of yours i have to fulfill pursuing that the sage is contented that female celestial sumada who is aware of making good sentences is highly delighted and spoke with her melodious voice to that learned sage vedic splendor is flourishing in you when you have become one with brahma o supreme ascetic i may please be endowed with a righteous son whose ascetic spirituality may incarnate the spirituality proclaimed in vedas i am unmarried and nobody's wife safe you be and as i took shelter under your kindness it will be apt of you to endow me a son with your faculty of ascetism so said somada to sage kuli that brahman sage kuli favorably bestowed her with an unique and brahma like son who is renowned as brahmadatta as well as his own brain child 
King Brahmadatta endured with superb grandeur ruled from a city called Kampilya. <coughs> As with Indra ruled the heaven. The most righteous king Kushanaba then made up his mind, O Rama of Kakoshta, to espouse his hundred daughters to Brahmadatta. Inviting Brahmadatta, the great resplendent lord of that land, namely the king Kushanaba, married his hundred daughters to him, pleasing highly in his heart of hearts. As with the tradition of marriage, King Brahmadatta, who weighs with lord of lords, namely Indra, in succession took the palm of each of the hundred girls into his palm. By mere touch of hand of Brahmadatta alone, their misshapen and desperations are vanished. And all of those hundred maidens, maidens beamed bright <coughs> as they are retouched with utmost elegance. On seeing his daughters getting released from the effect of air god, Kushanaba became highly joyful and it took great delight time and again as when he looked at them. Later when the marriage is complete, King Kushanaba bade farewell to King Brahmadatta along with his wives his own hundred daughters and along with the group of religious teachers. Somada, the celestial female and the mother of Brahmadatta is gladdened to see her son Brahmadatta for the worthwhile deed done by him in removing the blemish caused by the air god to the girls or in bringing those worthwhile girls as her daughter-in-law. She is further gladdened while her feet are traditionally and repeatedly touched by a hundred daughter-in-laws in succession coupled with her own raising of each of the daughter-in-law to embrace for hundred times. The Somada has gone on caressing each of her hundred daughter-in-law and in doing so, she is gladdened to do so over and over again. She is gladdened. She thus praised Kushanaba for giving his gem-like daughters as her daughter-in-law and blessed the daughter-in-laws. Thus, this is the 33rd chapter in Balakanda of Valmiki Ramayana, the first epic poem of India. Sri Moolarama Vijayate Om Sri Krishnar Panamastu